one. So the factories have started reopening ever since unlock phase one has got announced. And to that extent, the utilization levels across their plants uh, would start ramping up. Uh, Again, I think from a structural perspective, the long-term drivers obviously stay intact. Uh, so the volume growth uh, is largely dependent on how the GDP uh, of, of the country will grow. And if it is expected to contract this year, I think this year might be a washout year, specifically the next two quarters, uh, as far as the volume outlook is concerned. Uh, but uh, they have a strong uh, dealer network, uh, the expectations in terms of repainting demand and the expectations of GDP bouncing back very, very sharply in FY21. I think those are key trigger points from a long-term perspective. So there is short-term pain that one has to uh, uh, probably go through over the next couple of quarters, to say the least. Uh, but the long-term structural uh, stories remain intact. Uh, the second element, obviously, is the cost of labor is far more significant than the cost of paints uh, because a lot of companies, including Asian paints, have introduced uh, uh, a lot of uh, innovate, innovation, specifically in terms of paints, uh, in the economy range as well. And tier three, tier four cities is where demand remains uh, extremely robust. Uh, uh, specifically as uh, volumes will pick up uh, going forward as well. Uh, the dealer inventory around a month uh, or at this point of time, and therefore uh, uh, the pain has to get gestated in terms of reported numbers. Uh, as far as Asian pains is concerned, obviously decorative leader uh, with the 80, 85, more than 85% coming in from the Indian markets itself. Uh, so the expectations is uh, largely again uh, on an annualized basis over the next couple of years, margin should be around uh, a reasonable level. Uh, around uh, 20, 21 odd percent return on equity has always been strong because of the cash flows. Uh, but the internet paint will come through uh, in this quarter and the next. So I think let's wait for numbers and the expectation, as you rightly said, is it's going to be a little bit soft. Okay. Well, from there on, uh, we move on and talk about HDFC AMC. Now, remember, we had an offer for sale from its promoter, Standard Life Investments. And now it is well within the minimum public shareholding norms uh, as mandated by SEBI, and the promoters now holds only 74% stake in HDFC AMC. Mirish, that uh, supply overhang is out of the way now. Uh, how do you rate HDFC AMC at this point uh, well, as an investor? So two aspects again, Agam. Uh, if you look at the uh, entire uh, AUM uh, scenario specifically for the quarter gone by, and with the volatility that we witnessed uh, around the end of March, uh, it was a natural phenomena uh, that there were outflows uh, across schemes. So debt, equity, liquid schemes uh, saw a huge outflow. However, SIF flows have remained very, very consistent uh, even through the crisis period. Uh, now for HDFC AMC individually, I think the leadership position uh, with the market share between 14 to 15% still continues. Uh, uh, outside the urban cities, B30 or the emerging new cities, which uh, account for a major chunk in terms of uh, the new SIP or the AUM growth for all these asset management players, uh, there it has got around 12% in terms of market share. SBI obviously is the market leader at this point of time with a share of almost 20, 21 odd percent. Uh, a large element in terms of uh, their AUM at this point of time, uh, 3 lakh 10,000 odd uh, crores, uh, uh, a large skew towards equity and the yield thereof remaining extremely strong. Uh, I think that is something which has given HDFC AMC premium valuations. Uh, so market share gains, expectations of higher proportion of equity AMs, uh, the presence in B30 cities, as I said, uh, has always given that edge in terms of uh, uh, the, the return uh, the return ratios that are expected out of those stocks. And rightfully so, ROEs have been around 26, 27-odd percent. Revenue to AUM is expected to remain consistent at 0.5 percent. However, the overhang that has got removed, uh, I think there can be another issues that can come through in terms of whether these valuations can trade at a premium. For example, I think UTI AMC, as I just read, has uh, received the nod in terms of uh, a SEBI approval process. Uh, and there might be other asset management companies that can also come through over the next few months or quarters as time uh, uh, permits. So therefore, I think the uh, uh, expectations in terms of more AMCs coming through in the markets and whether these premium valuations hold good because of uh, further players coming in and choice given to investors, uh, one really has to wait and watch. It's a solid franchise, no two ways about it. Uh, but again, all these other factors will also be at play 
as far as the asset management business is concerned. Okay, fair enough. Uh, well, and we address a final stock on our list, and that's InfoEdge. Well, it came up with earnings last evening, and uh, based on that, it wasn't out of expectations, considering its revenues rose around 7.8%. Margins holding steady at 28% against 28.4%. It net profit did decline or by as much as 64%, but that was largely on account of uh, certain associates and joint ventures, which uh, led to a, uh, an operating loss. And because of that, there was a loss of around 136 crores from associates and JVs as against 90 crore profit for the same quarter in the last year which is why we saw that dip in profitability. Mauritia, the management has always maintained that this is one company which is linked to the well-being of the economy. And uh, based on that, uh, we're still seeing InfoEdge well, trade at uh, very, very high valuations. How are you rating this one? The numbers, as you rightly pointed out, uh, were more or less unexpected lines. Uh, now the core elements of their business, specifically the recruitment business, which happens through Nokri and the real estate arm, which happens to 99 acres, uh, the management did allude to some pain going forward, both in terms of the receivables, uh, as well as expectations in terms of delay in collections that they might face. Uh, so considering both these elements at play, uh, both these parts of the businesses are going to get affected because of the lockdown that you witnessed in Q1. Uh, so the Q1 earnings uh, have been pointed out uh, are going to be extremely soft, which means that the annualized numbers will also take a hit. Uh, now, apart from these two core businesses, uh, the investments that they've done in various investing companies, uh, the kind of impairments uh, that they are taking over the last few quarters, uh, I think that is also going to take a toll in terms of the overall profitability. Cash flows have always remained strong for this company because of uh, their core business, Nokri, which has been a cash cow for the company. But how does the recruitment scenario play out specifically uh, post uh, this pandemic or even during this pandemic crisis uh, is something to be seen uh, and how companies probably react uh, in terms of new hiring. Uh, the fourth element obviously is also the investments that they've got uh, in companies like Somato or even Policy Bazaar. Uh, which obviously are fetching multi-dollar valuations at this point of time. And considering their stake within these uh, companies as well, I think the sum of value parts that get added to the final price, which gets stated, has already got gestated into quite, quite, uh, uh, I mean, it has got gestated into from a, a numbers perspective. Therefore, I think it's all about uh, how numbers will play out. Uh, numbers can be very, very volatile considering the kind of businesses they are into. Because even the reality business on 99 acres, uh, I think what kind of traction does that business generate going forward, specifically in a periodic day like this? And when does the recovery finally come? I think that probably remains an overhang onto the stock as well. Okay, fair enough, Mayuresh. Uh, we'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for joining us and taking us through your views on these talks this morning.